I'm Ralph Stellick, my wife Mary. We were very blessed to have both our parents and grandparents as being members of St. Matthew's congregations who were born into the congregation where we were baptized and confirmed and married here in Stoddard at St. Matthew's Church. As soon as we were confirmed, then you became a member of the Young People's Society. A couple of times a month we had meetings and we would get together with the young people of our congregation. We'd go on sled riding parties and skating parties and that sort of thing. So that was the one thing that we really looked forward to. When going to young people's and I met Ralph, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I got to know him more and more. That's how I supposed we got together. If I recall <clears throat> about the first time that we could say it was a somewhat date is when I had told her when we were going for a sleigh riding party and then I told her I would stop and pick her up. Started out in eighth grade. Pastor Gieschen was, <clears throat> was our pastor here. His wife asked me if I would be interested in helping out down at St. John's play organ. And so she said she would give me a few lessons. So that was in eighth grade and I played up to 2010. So that's about 48 years. I think that was long enough. The thing I remember about my confirmation is with the white shirt and the gown and so forth and with the common cup and I was relatively tall at the time when the pastor brought the cup up to my lips to give me a drink of the wine. He tilted a little too far and the wine ran down the, the side of my mouth, down my chin and dripped all over the gown and my shirt. When Pastor Klein was there and he was sitting up on the side and the bell rang and so I had put a sheet of music up there. I turned away to get another book to put up there and that piece of paper fell. And I always had a favorite little saying, I still say it to this day, oh George. And so that paper fell down and I went, and he saw me say that <laughs> and he started laughing. He had to look the other way, so. I was in various offices from, I think I was about 27 when I, the first time I was on the church council and, and was off and on for the past 50 years as far as being on the council, elders, etc. I remember my father and my uncle Joe used to always dig the graves by hand at St. Matthew's. And later on, when Joe couldn't do it, I helped my father uh, for a year or so with the digging the graves by hand. Then it ended up that Jerry Henson and I dug an awful, awful lot of graves by hand on St. Matthew's Cemetery. It brings back a lot of memories every time we go up there and cut the grass on the cemetery. One of the most memorable things was when we had, after this, the first vote was turned down to build a new church and school, and approximately a year or so later, the vote did go through that we would at least go forward and find out the feasibility of building a church and school. While the building committee and the church council was in the basement planning our new church and school with Mr. Clements Construction Architects, I was up in one of the side rooms, I think the pastor study, and uh, I was supposed to take a census of the people or have the people come in and would tell us how much money they would donate toward the down payment at least and also uh, how much they could pledge. And I think it was something like $25,000 we had to come up with. And it was just unbelievable to me how some of these older ladies, the widows that you didn't think had really much of anything, would come in and pledge $1,000 or just come up with $1,000. So within about an hour and a half of sitting there, I had the greatest joy of being able to go down the stairs and tell the guys, go for it we have the $25,000 in hand or pledged, we can go forward. And then later on also, the church when it was built, uh, there was so much donation of time and resources. Uh, all of the black ground that went around the building was donated. All of the sod, I remember going up by Oscar Miller's farm with the sod cutter and the tremendous amount of people from our congregation that came and cut the sod and rolled it and loaded it in wagons, brought it back down and unrolled the sod so we had an instant lawn. The bell tower was completely donated. Uh, one of our members ended up, as they were constructing the church, 
donated the balcony because of the fact that was not part of the original plan, but we needed a balcony. So this person and his wife actually went and got a loan and paid for the construction of the new balcony and then he himself finished it off as far as the railing. And so it was just a tremendous outlaying of donations of money, time, materials, and so forth. In addition to the experience of the helping and, and being uh, with the building of the new church and school, one of the real highlights of my time at St. Matthew's was when I was on the church council and could look across the table and see Tim, my oldest son, as a councilman on the same council at the same time I was there. What a blessing. Well, I thought it was really cool. I graduated from Luther High. My two sons graduated from Luther High and my two grandchildren graduated from Luther High. I thought kind of cool, different Sundays, I was playing the organ, my name was as the organist, and Ralph and my boys were ushers. So all four of the Stelics had their name in the bullet. All of the preaching and the beliefs in our congregation is directly out of the Bible. We want people to know that regardless of what they are, think they have done or have done, they're always welcome at church. Hear the comfort of God's Word being preached. I know we have one of the friendliest congregations and the people that are not members are more than welcome at any time. And the main thing is, of course, when you look at the front of the church to see that cross. That is the heart of our religion, that Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins and kept us from going to hell. No matter how good, bad, or indifferent they are, really makes no difference. Their belief in Jesus as their Savior is the heart and soul of our religion, and that's what it takes to be saved.